General Motors has had a massive marketing push promoting EVs, some that are on the road today and others that are coming. What are some of the products fleet customers can look forward to that will help achieve their sustainability goals? Yeah, thanks, and uh, Neil, thanks for the mention of the Silverado EV, uh, which we're launching uh, fleet first here very, very shortly. Uh, we're getting orders uh, right now out there. We, we've been uh, with this EV strategy at GM since 2017. Mary Barra laid out a, a future vision for the company where we see a world where there will be zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. And um, we've been very, very vocal about it. And uh, we've got a lot of incredible products that are coming to the marketplace. We'll have 30 EV models globally that we're going to launch by 2025. And I think it's really important, so many of, the, of you in the audience here today have been working on infrastructure uh, for quite some time, and it does take time. And you need to have the infrastructure in place so that you can receive all these great new vehicles and do what they need to do. So again, we've been working on this with our commercial and our government customers for the better part of three years, talking with them about what their needs are and how they're going to get into this EV business big time. This year, as, as we said, we're launching the Silverado EV. We're launching the Blazer EV. For the government customers out there, we will have a Blazer EV police pursuit vehicle, which we think is going to be super cool and fast. And we'll have the Equinox EV as well. So there's a lot of vehicles that we're going to be launching. We have Hummer in the marketplace uh, right now. We've also got Bright Drop in the marketplace with a 600 cubic foot uh, delivery van, our brand new um, uh, part of GM. I love GM and, and, and they're doing great. They'll have a 400 cubic foot van. The Zevo 400 will be in production soon. So there's a whole bunch of things uh, that are coming. We're really, really excited about it. We're betting the farm on on EV and where this thing is going. And I think so many of the other OEMs are, are doing the same thing. So, thank you. EVs are definitely something we're all focused on. Fantastic. Thank you. So, Gagan, I want to start with you next for the next question. You have responsibility for the fleet digital product portfolio at Stellantis. With software-defined vehicles, can you share with us what that means from a commercial customer point of view? Thank you, Sherry. Um, this is a very exciting area. Software-defined vehicle, it is essential to achieve the transformation that auto industry is going through. It will also transfer all of our fleet uh, management systems for productivity, connectivity, as well as sustainability, customization, safety, and for cost of doing business. The vehicle is continuously connected to its en environment and it will evolve with the need of a customer. The innovation will accelerate with software-defined vehicle. The new features and apps will be developed that will be quickly delivered to market to meet the needs of a customer in a timely fashion, not wait for two or three years. Um, the goal is to continuously measure performance and reduce friction for all of the fleet management systems. And this is exactly what we're doing at Stellantis and I'm responsible for it. Very exciting area for me. And software is driving innovation and it's also enhancing owner-operator value proposition. Capabilities are increasing from basic functions to very advanced functions that will enable automation and that is very exciting to enable automation and increase our productivity. Um, added safety and security, um, digital and shareable keys and diagnostic predictive maintenance. Software defined vehicle are thinking machines. They will be adapting to driver's needs and fleet manager's needs based on the need forward or content forward basis, not what products are available, but what products are needed. It is our goal at Stellantis to help business grow and thrive in this new era of mobility, a very exciting field. It's wonderful, and it's definitely about automation and digital keys. I think everyone's really looking forward to that. Absolutely. Uh, Brandon, at Rivian, your focus is on growth across the commercial value chain. How does data factor into Rivian's plans to grow value, leveraging products with data? 
Yeah, absolutely, and that's a great question. Sherry, Neil, thanks for thanks for having us. What a, what a great turnout, and for letting us put a put a truck on the, the showroom floor. Uh, data is paramount to us. Um, we live we <laughs> we live it, we breathe it. Uh, we use it in every aspect of our of our business. Uh, we use it to manufacture our vehicles, deploy our vehicles, even allow our vehicles to get better over time. Um, and we use a lot of it. You could just ask uh, our carrier partners, some of which <laughs> are in the audience. Um, the goal for us, though, is to enable our end users, the operators, to be able to extract the same, if not more, value out of that same data. Um, and what the, the critical part there, though, is we don't want to manage their business for them, right? And I think that's the distinction here, is we want to be able to provide them that, that valuable insight, the actionable insight, um, so they can manage their business as they manage their business. And whether that's increasing uptime, uh, lowering total cost of ownership, um, making maintenance more efficient, increasing driver safety. Um, and that's where strategic partners come into play because it's so important to partner appropriately so we can enable and bring these technologies and these insights down to the end user. When, when an operator or a fleet can seamlessly interact with a Rivian as they do other vehicles in their fleet with technologies and platforms and software that they've been using for 10, 15, 20 years, um, we all win. And those are the synergies um, that, that really create value. It allows all of us to focus on our core competencies um, and stay in our own lanes. So that's very important for us, and, and we feel those are the drivers for, for value. Absolutely, and it does take you know the partnerships all working together for the end customer. Absolutely, it's great. Yeah. So Neil, I'm going to switch to you for the next one. You had some really interesting comments during your opening keynote about the importance of our ecosystem and all of us working together. What do you what do you see as the role for OEMs playing in terms of data needs for our mutual customers? And what are some of those key things we should be aware of? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> data is obviously a key element of what feeds demand today. If you think about uh, a fleet manager operating a fleet, they sit today and they drive their business KPIs based on data that they analyze, that they understand. They measure everything so they understand, for example, how long is it taking me to maintain? You know, which customers am I visiting? How's my fuel consumption going? And you know, as was talked about before, it really is about making sure we have the data available for the, those KPIs. And Jetsat has had 20 years of experience doing this, so we see ourselves as kind of the glue a little bit between the OEMs and the customer. Given our experience with solving these problems for our customers, given the work that we've done you know, to sit with you know, UPS and, and the other large fleets to really understand this is the things that drive, which day do you need, when do you need it in order to solve their problems. What we want to do is work with the OEMs very closely and make sure that we take that knowledge to them and say this is the data that we need to get and, and really a partnership approach. So um, I'm excited for the future. I really, you know, hopefully in the keynote it came out, but I do believe that the future belongs to OEMs. And it's going to be an interesting future, and we're going there at a pretty fast pace, so it's exciting. So, Ed, I'm going to go to you for this next question, and I want to continue on that theme of data. Help us understand your perspective on how telematics and the use of data intelligence is evolving within GM, and what customers are asking for. Yeah, I, I think, Sherry, I mean, data is everything, right? I mean, we've been talking about it this morning, and really amazing, great stat to Neil that this morning when you were speaking that the amount of connected vehicles that you have up 60% just you know versus just three years ago. So I think the more data that our fleet managers have to work with, uh, the more efficient their fleets are going to be, become. And I, I think it's not just about efficiency, it's also about safety. And I know you made that point this morning because I think the two biggest needs that all fleet managers have, one is safety keeping my drivers safe, and the second is it's got to work for me from a total cost ownership standpoint. Uh, obviously, telematics is one of the fastest growing areas of, of fleet management. Uh, again, a few years ago, maybe folks just needed some really basic telematics functions. Now, as you know, telematics can capture virtually uh, every aspect of a vehicle's function all in, all in real time. And I, I think for us, we think OnStar is a, is a big advantage of GM. We have been, uh, we started OnStar almost 27 years ago. We have a lot of uh, great data, particularly as we move into an EV world. I mean, we, we've got 
over 4 billion miles tracked with the bolts that we have out on the road now. And all of that's really, really important. I think things like uh, in-vehicle coaching for the drivers out there, uh, it really works. I mean, I had to put on my own vehicle and well, I'd be like five or seven miles over the speed limit and it just kept squawking at me. You're going too fast, you're going too fast. But it does make you go slower and it does conserve fuel and it does uh, make the drive safer for the drivers that are out there. So uh, again, I think this thing's only gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, particularly as we uh, look at computers on wheels, which is what EVs and ultimately AVs are. And you talk about the data and you know, just the integration with that and oh, how far thanks. we've come. Um, couldn't agree with you more about the in-vehicle coaching, um, something we've been doing at Geotab for quite a while, and having that, you know, being proactive, not waiting until after the fact. Really coaching those drivers in real time is so critical and important. So thank you for that. So, Gavin, I'd like to move to you next in the same question. Can you share how telematics and the use of data is evolving within Stellantis and what your customers are asking you for? Yeah, thank you, Sherry. And I agree with that. Um, the telematics has been with us for some time, you know, and we have, a, we have seen the enormous value telematics and data brings to us. Um, and so from what I see from here, it is exponential growth of all the products. Um, and to, do, to achieve that, we, what we're doing at OEMs is organizing, engineering our data, and engineering the organization of data so that the use is very productive. Um, so data that will create products. And the data is also, um, when the EVs come in, and then especially assisted driving grows, um, and more and more features come in that space, um, it will, the new use cases will emerge, the new product will come that we can't even think of yet. And then especially with a software defined vehicle, those products will come to a market very fast. As we measure, understand how fleet is evolving, we'll be able to bring, um, because of telematics and because of the data understanding, we'll be able to bring the product to market very fast. And we have also in Stellantis have created a new organization mobility site and their whole purpose is to create and draw actionable insights from the data that OEMs and also partners like Geotab have in the market. So I am very excited about this field. It's going to grow very fast from here. It's exciting. Definitely at the most exciting time I think in this industry we've ever had. Wonderful. Neil, I'm going to switch to you to close out this question for the panel. From a Geotab perspective, how is data intelligence evolving based on what our customers are asking for? Yeah, I mean, it's, we certainly, customers need more than just location data now. In fact, um, you know, all this telematics data in some ways is contributing to a bit of information overload. Right? But there's a difference between data and information. Right? So data is the raw information and then um, you know, it's the insights that really matter. So how do we get the insights out to tell us what, how do we change our business? What do we do differently? So for example, benchmarking is a great way to do that. If we can identify what your vehicles do using machine learning and say, well, that's clearly a police vehicle, you know, that's a, a, a bus that picks up kids, or this is a long haul delivery vehicle that operates daytime, and then we benchmark those vehicles against the best fits in the world, then we can say, that we need to be safer, we need that vehicle to be more efficient, we need to change the type of vehicle. So, you know, as time goes on, the more data, the more data we need to collect, the more, the better we're going to get, and the more we need advanced AI to unlock those features. And I know we've talked a lot about AI, and it can be a little wishy-washy AI, but when you start seeing these real insights pop up in your system telling you that you need to go change that battery now, or you know, this is a great vehicle, this vehicle here is a perfect candidate to change to an EV, or these following drivers need some safety training, then you'll start seeing really the power. So Geotab knows what to record, we know the frequency, we know what matters, and we'll help our AM partners, as mentioned before.